Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench. We are at episode number 68. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. How's everybody doing today? I'm taking over this intro because this is all about night dental. Well, you know, it's kind of all about night dental and all of our awesome employees. We have four interviews that are either current or past employees of night dental group. We've got Sharon Belak, who's been with me for 30 plus years, not mentioning age. She's got an interesting tale about how she got into the business how a competitive and awesome attitude has led to her success and now taking the time to help doctors in our laboratory. Then we talked to Dan LaRock, who's a former employee who's been from the Air Force and started at Night Dental Group in our Empress Department. He is now in the removable department as a lead at DSG. Then we had the pleasure of the man sitting next to me right now, who's Mirza, and I'm actually going to have him announce his last name. How do you suffer it? Very easy, only 14 letters. Say it again. How do you suffrage? So if you see it in writing, you'd be like, oh my goodness, how do you pronounce that? So I asked him to come up here and introduce himself. He's a weapons designer from Bosnia. He moved to Salt Lake City, Utah, and eventually found his way to Night Dental Group. And he is a master designer. He checks all of our implant cases. He deals with all of the complex cases, and I'm glad to have him here to pronounce his last name. And, and software issues. And happy birthdays. He's saying happy birthday to one of our employees today, so he's famous for that. <laughs> and we wrap up with John Bosker, who's a former employee that I knew when I was a little lab rat, so when I was 13, coming into the laboratory when my dad was still here. He worked at Night Dental for about 17 years. He's now running Marquee Dental Laboratories, where he has found his passion with directly helping patients and running the lab business, which we all know how fun that is. So join us. Whole lot of Florida, whole lot of night dental. I hope you all enjoy. Wow. (laughs) That is a whole lot of Florida. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Hey! So we are at FDLA again, once again, Florida, and we are here with Miss Sharon Belak, who actually works for and has worked for Night Dental for about, I don't know, 39. 39. And she looks like she's 20. How'd you do that? I was going to say, you're only 20. She looks like she's 20. I started And she's amazing. (laughs) So she started with my father. And I'm so happy because this is a Florida meeting and I have all my group. I have all my amazing people here and I love them so much. So Sharon's been with us for 39 years. And so tell us, how did you get into the industry? Well, give us it, a lowdown, baby. Okay. It was an unusual situation. Um, my father had built the original building on Sunnydale and I was outside painting. <gasps> I was on a ladder. Wait, the original pink. Night Dental? Yeah. Well, not the this original. This is like old, but t- old school right here, bro. Yeah, this goes Just back saying. a ways. <laughs> so I'm on a ladder painting, looking through the window, going, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I go inside, and I have an interview, and I get hired. And I started in the model department and uh, worked my way up to, all the way to uh, CTS. I did waxing. CTS. What is CTS? Uh, client Technical Services. Oh, tell us about when you were a waxer and how what a bad ass waxer oh, you were. Oh, I was a Please bad ass. do tell yes, us. Yes, definitely. Um, so I started sprewing and investing, and uh, the lead waxer was doing 25 units and um, competitive like Barb is, as you all know. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Not me. And um, I said, oh, I want to do that. So I started uh, waxing, and back then there wasn't a technique on how to learn. So it was more of uh, throw wax on a model and close the articulator and make a tooth. Well, what does the tooth look like? I have no clue. (laughs) I took a trip to Colorado. I get off the plane in Denver, and I look at the mountains, and I go, wow, those mountains look like teeth. But the the, you know, the cuss tips, the snow coming down, look like anatomy, and the light bulb went off. As we all know, all technicians have that light bulb that goes off. Yes. Still waiting for mine. Are you? (laughs) 
So I remember going up to Scott Pincus, as you all know, and saying, Scott, I want to make more money. And he goes to me, well, Sharon, do more work. <laughs> and I went, as the competitive person I am, Probably okay. <laughs> so um, back then I started doing 30 units of waxing and uh, was full a contour. lot. Full uh, contour? Yeah. Full oh. contour, oh. And interior attachments back then. And then I went from 30 to 50. And I was the lead waxer, and I rocked it, baby. And uh, How long did you do that for? Oh, many, many years, as long as the Crown and Bridge um, was active. And then I became supervisor of the department and moved on to the client technical services. And now I coach doctors um, oh, with God. impressions and she materials. She deals with doctors. Um, she genuinely has, like, 500 clients. I'm giving you a shout-out because... Yeah. And, you know, some of these younger doctors, she takes them along. She teaches them how to make an impression, how to do a better prep, uh, reduction copings, reduce opposing, how not to do that, what's parallelism, Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of preps do we need to be digital. Mm -hmm. And so she actually coaches our doctors. She's one of four um, that have about 500 doctors at Night Dental that deal with that. She texts she texts literally, uh, phone, text, email, you name it. Um, she's amazing. So, and That's we have a full-time actually a job and a half. Yeah, it is, and it's still competitive in my yeah. mind because you're trying to get the best results for the patient. Mm-hmm. And when you get that phone call and say, "Man, that case went in, and it's beautiful," and the patient cried. It's like, score! Yeah. Did you ever have a doctor thank you for helping? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I had one uh, just yesterday. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yes. So, you, you get yeah, both. We yeah. really like that, you know. Because uh, sometimes we're afraid to help a doctor and he'll you. take it the wrong way. Yes, what do you care. know, you low-life technician? You don't know what Correct. you're doing. I went to school for this. Correct. And I always ask for permission if, if I can offer a suggestion before I throw out any information. So I don't insult. Sure. Um, of course. Um, and then when they say yes, then I open the gate <laughs> and uh, give them what I know. And whatever I can do to help. Have you ever not been able to help a doctor? They're so terrible that you're just like, I don't know what to do anymore. Well, I do make suggestions, and it's just a matter of of listening. If they follow it, um, it usually works, but sometimes they don't, and it's just the business. Yeah. You know, everybody's different. Um, So, yes, there are some failures, I should say. Well, we all have doctors we want to fire, I guess is the term. Are you all right over there? <laughs> Barb is laughing uncontrollably. I'm actually laughing because Nelson Rigo just say, came up to say goodbye. And I oh. think he's, I'm, I'm sorry, Sharon. I'm not trying that's, to be rude. but That's quite all right. He's, I'm a fan and he's amazing. And so, yes. No, I'm not all right. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Back to it. We just got done talking about you. <laughs> there's people, when you do live, folks, just saying, there's people that come up to you. And I'm trying not to be rude to Sharon. I'm trying not to be rude to him. But uh, Nelson good. Rigo is one of my heroes. And so I'm sorry. No disrespect. No, no problem. All right, let's go. She was talking about how all, she helps all your doctors do mm-hmm. it right, mm-hmm. which is an important job. So anyway, I want to tell you about a little bit about Night Dental Group. I have been there. This will be my 39th year. And it's like a second family, and I think yeah. the camaraderie is just the most important thing. Um, there may be technicians that we don't hang together, we don't see each other all the time, but it's still a second family. We spend so much time together, and we care about each other, and it's just it's just a, a wonderful relationship. I don't know if all labs are like this, oh, but I have to I say that her. Night Dental is just... Known for it, and it's just very important. And Barb, um, she keeps she keeps the love alive. Um, she always cares about people. She Thanks. takes care about them. I, she, I paid her for this. Just saying, <laughs> not, not she really. Did not she. She wants. To, you know, she's always asking about people's family. How you doing? How's your kids? How's your husband? How's your wife? How's things Aww, going? Thanks, and man. that is so important. I think that's. It's just amazing, and and I think. The care that she shows to the technicians is just so, it's just so spectacular is what I say. I like that word. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, thank you, though. I appreciate that. And it's very meaningful to me. And I genuinely love 
our industry. I love my yes. company. I love my team. And you took that all role the people, on from and Bob. so you, thank you. From your dad, you took that role on from him, and you carried it on, and you're still carrying it on. And I thank think that's you. so important um, for Knight to have that, uh, the care, the family-oriented care of the industry. <sighs> All right, so we're going to wrap it up with that because yeah. <laughs> she's very nice and we love her and thank you. I thank genuinely you so appreciate the on. positives. Absolutely. Thank you for telling us how you got into the industry and what makes you pump and what makes you roll. We're going to wrap it up right here, ladies awesome. and gentlemen. Thank right. you. Take one. care. Bye. Bye. We are here, day two, FDLA Symposium and Expo 2019. We are joined by Dan, Dan LaRock. La I Rock. love that CDT. La Rock. CDT. So Dan and I go way back. Dan's been at Night Dental, not anymore, but he was with us for what? Fif- 15, 15 and years. a half years. He knows my father and my family and everybody else. It's good to see you. So we ran into him and I wrapped him up and brought him over here for a chat. So what, well, did, you, what did you do at night? At night, I was hired to be the uh, Empress Department lead. And shortly after I started, uh, another fellow came in, Rick, Rick yeah. Brewer. Yeah. And Rick Brewer had a couple of years of experience in the Empress Department, so I kind of uh, made that known to the upper management, and I uh, wanted to work in tandem with him and Jerry Dungilly at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. He uh, an old name. opted me into uh, working with Bob, mm-hmm. with your dad. So I sat next to Bob. Like half the time, uh, in the, in, within that first six months or year that I was working at Night Dental Group in mm-hmm. 2000, and I learned to uh, communicate with the doctors. And then, how did you get into it? Didn't you, don't you have like a great story? Weren't you in the military? Or? I was. Uh, yeah, I uh, my my el my elder brother Patrick, who's also a Night Dental Group uh, uh, alum, long time. He was. Uh, he went into the Air Force and uh, did the dental assisting deal, and was stationed out in Southern California. And as I graduated and moved forward in my life, I ended up moving out there after high school, mm-hmm. and uh, in a big bachelor pad. And Patrick had finished his Air Force time, but he had uh, followed two dentists out and helped them with their practice and learned laboratory from yeah, that end sure. at that time. And I just happened to be uh, impressionable <laughs> at 19. And my brother Pat and I have very similar personalities yes, and likes and dislikes and things like that. So um, it only seemed normal or natural for me to eventually, I ended up signing up to go into the Air Force at age, I was 20. I was 20 years old at the time and had uh, Missed some college exams, and my father convinced me that uh, you know, he was the greatest recruiter in the world, and I ended up joining reluctantly, um, but I did enjoy my uh, Air Force time. So I went in at 21, signed yep. up to be a dental laboratory yep, technician. I thought so. And uh, my first station was overseas in West Germany, and I ended up being a wild child over there and uh, no. getting uh, getting into a couple of little issues, I but I can't see that. But, but I are you st- are you allowed back in Germany or no? Oh yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, I had a um, a great time, learned a lot, and um, enjoyed the military structure. I kind of grew up. You know, I'm a product of the military, but yeah. Uh, nonetheless, I did nearly ten years Air Force time. I had to. Um, Done very well. Had lived in Germany for over six years. Wow. Cool. Got ended up getting married before I left Germany to another Air Force gal that was a nursing assistant or something. And and uh, my oldest daughter was born in Wiesbaden. Leah. Oh wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So. Awesome. But rotated back stateside, and uh, was stationed up in Illinois at an Air Force base in Rantoul, Illinois, about two hours south of Chicago. And it was an old training base. Mm-hmm. And at the time, the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, our government was all looking at all the bases to shut down and to close and all that stuff and restructure. Yeah. And, yep. and sh- short order, I was, um, uh, we had my son was born in Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. Oh. Is that where you live, Elvis, or no. Chicago? <laughs> I hate you so much. 
lives in Indiana. Oh, oh you finally oh. remember. I think that, that's the first time I've said that correctly. <laughs> I want to place him in Illinois for some reason. <laughs> To Barb, Sorry, there's like Dan. four states. All right. They're all the same. It's an inside joke. <laughs> Oscar. Oh, it, there's John. But, uh, it's it, cool when you're live. You see all <laughs> kinds of stuff going on. Sorry, folks, but we're. Uh, I love this. this yeah, is, uh, we're a little ADD this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Between Dan and Barbara. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, from, from Illinois, I, when I got back stateside, the, um, um, being in the military had been taking care of myself and my family overseas but when we came back stateside there was no uh the pay was um less than half i was making less than half living on the base mm. and i at that moment i made the de- decision that i was going to have to break free of the service and make some money and get out into yeah. the real yeah. world uh, yeah. and that's the way that that went so um the base was closing down i could have gotten out right at the moment but i was struggling financially and uh, the air force offered me two choices mccord which is Washington State or McDill. The no-brainer for me oh, is McDill is, is that here? McDill is Tampa, Florida. That's yeah, cool. yeah. And my home of record was Dunedin. That's where I launched from and you know, went into the service. So it just seemed like a nice circle. I came back to McDill. I finished my time in the service and uh, actually walked from in my blue dress blue uniform air force when i when i out processed of uh, off the base. I walked right into a classroom at Tampa Bay Technical High School. Taught, to, oh she got it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're kidding me! How does that happen? All right, so my girlfriend Sharon just rolled in with some fireball. <laughs> Sorry, and um, she, did you win that? Oh, that is amazing. See, there's another live thing. So let's explain I don't real think quick. I've had any coffee. The yet, NADL and the FDL does a wine and liquor toss for ring toss. the foundation. Ring toss for the foundation. Yes. So you buy rings, and if you hit a bottle and it lands in the bottle, you get the bottle. That's awesome. That is actually really <laughs> funny. I cannot believe that. Wow, that's hilarious. All right. It's way too early for that. I could use some coffee, though. All right. So. All right. So I'm back sorry. This. Back to the story. <laughs> See what happens? This the is hist- how we edited this out. The history is that from Illinois and the closure of that base coming to McDill was a good move. Yep. Got down here. I was back with my family. Yep. You know, granddad and grandma. And I at that po- moment, I had two young children and uh, mom was at home. And I. Walked into that classroom teaching. It was very nice, great schedule. Yeah. The money looked like it translated to what I earned in the Air Force at the time uh, into the teaching community. But this is another thing about teachers. It's unfortunate that they are paid so little. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was yeah. paid as a seven-year teacher, and it wasn't enough money yeah. to sustain my young family. And when it was about to have a third child, made that determination. Dan, you have a lot of kids. Jesus. Just three. That I'm aware of. Yeah. <laughs> but you're uh, aware of. That's, that's kind of funny. There's my raspy late night. There's my raspy voice again. You like it, Elvis? Yeah, I know you good, do. It's good. It's kind of Kim carnes oh, Sorry, it always goes back to me. It's I guess good. I'm a narcissist. I hope you, I hope you edit that out because that's just not funny. <laughs> it always it's comes back good. to me. It's all good. I know. All right, keep going. Two days of FDLA, we end up with <laughs> ten minutes of good content. <laughs> so, jeez, go ahead. At that point, when I realized that I was going down financially, I actually, um, uh, you know, what, this is a little dirt on me, but that's the reality of a lot of income just 10 months earlier and then no income sure. and a lot of debt. So I had to restructure and I resigned my teaching uh, position after a year and a half. Um, and I did a blind faith move and took my young family, which was two and one on the way, mm-hmm. with their mother, and we moved to Arizona. And in Arizona, I had no connections at all other than uh, my ex-wife's sister working in a dental laboratory office. So you a, had a, a dental office just over there. Like everybody, in the, and, uh, everybody that we've talked to. There you go. And so and, you went to work for that lab? Nope. But I went out there and I just. The first job I got was uh, delivering pizzas. Okay. And the same day that I was hired for delivering pizzas, I was called to a, a lab, Gold Dust Dental Laboratory oh, in Tempe, great, Arizona. Yeah, that's a so good So that was the first good lab good I worked at in, in uh, Arizona, and they paid me 10 bucks an hour. 
and this was in '96, and uh, it was just a, it was just an in, it was just yep, an in sure. for me. Yeah. And I started working there, and uh, by the time I w- had gotten to the holiday time, the owner of that laboratory was a newly con- converted Mormon, and he closed the laboratory for a week over Christmas. And if you hadn't been there a year, you had no vacation. Oh. So me with a uh, young uh, budding family, I had to keep working. So I moonlit in another lab, and that laboratory is called Rush. Rush Dental Laboratory in Mesa, Arizona. Oh, everything we do is a rush. Yeah, that's I was going to say. That's a, and, and this, and I this, would have wanted the name of that lab. Do you know if lab. they're still around? I wouldn't doubt it. John John, J-O-N Shumway is the, was the owner of that laboratory. Rush. And he was a, an accountant by trade. But he knew the power of the dental field. And the, and the premise of this business was uh, one to three units in 24 hours. Wow. Just, just PFM. Okay. Basically PFM. And they, they, wow, that's pretty quick for way back then. Amen. Because there wasn't it any was technology. Awesome. It was all handmade. It was all handmade, hand all baby. Wow. That's right. And wow. We, we waxed and cast and you cool. know, did the whole that's thing, fast. finished. And I, that's where I learned to really do die trimming, mm-hmm. you know, fast. straight away. But <laughs> I had been doing... You know, uh, limited uh, porcelain work in the Air Force, but I had done everything on the removable side for the first two years, duplicating and and making um, uh, frameworks, basically frameworks and polishing them and yep. all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't but, know that. Oh yeah, yeah. The first two years of my military that's cool. time was all. That's why I called that um, uh, skill. I called back on that basic fundamental or that learning of when I went to DDS. A DDS lab, just a, a two short years ago, I was uh, hired on to be a technical consultant for the removable side because that's what they needed. Yeah. Anyway. There's another plug. So all these laboratories are all around us, DSG, DDS, Night Dental. Yeah, all, Bay Shore. Uh, we're all here at this Very interesting. Too. Remember yeah, Donald right. Holtz? Mm-hmm. Donald Holtz. Yeah, he's Donald still Holt. alive. <laughs> See, this is what happens when we're in Florida. We know everybody. Yeah. Sorry, Elvis. Uh, it's all good. He's another old timer. Oh yeah, he was at he was at Sunnydale. Yeah, he worked at Sunnydale. <laughs> he always got in trouble because he was always late and he was oh, always he was the, always partying. The funniest thing I, about I hope him he doesn't is, say anything bad about me if he's listening. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. He that. loves it. He loves it. Yeah, <laughs> he's a super guy. But okay. uh, he just started getting his uh, yeah to, to date him. He's 66 now. Wow. Started getting some, yeah, believe it or not. But, um, so super, now you're super. at, so tell us where you're at now. So now I'm at, at uh, DSG. DSG. I've joined Consulting the team in QC. DSG in Clearwater. Good I am you. exactly what uh, Bob, what Scott, so you're you, checking the work, calling Pat, the docs, checking the RX, Bosker. Sure no, I know, I know. <laughs> We're that, all here, by the way. Isn't that where Rebecca Wade is? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Good for you. Yeah, so she's, she reminds me of you tremendously she's a firecracker okay i'm not one today but i normally am <laughs> <laughs> okay well are we done with this yes we are. Okay. thank you nice you to guys meet are you, awesome sir. i thought nice you said five you. minutes thank you. Well, you just say hey, you have a great story <laughs> thank you you all appreciate it so here we are with somebody else from night dental <laughs> <laughs> group because i think half of this uh, meeting is consistent of people from Night Dental Group. A lot of them. <laughs> so this is uh, Mirza and Haji Yusufovich. It's Haji a must last. It's a must last name. Only fourteen letters. So it's fourteen easy. letters. Yeah. Three more, and you're gonna have all alphabet. Three more letters. <laughs> so it's only, yeah. That's the best joke I ever heard about my last name. So there you I, go. Uh, That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a good one. Uh, Mirza and his wife Vanessa um, both um, work at the lab. They're amazing, and they are uh, actually from Bosnia. Correct. So you she's know, from Herzegovina. I'm sorry to interrupt uh, you. I'm from Bosnia. Bosnia. Right? You're from Bosnia. So. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your story, your background, how you got over here, how you got into the laboratory industry. Just give us a sort of a, a snapshot on how uh, you ended up at Night Dental, my friend. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a mechanical engineering background, so I'm a mechanical engineer. So I was uh, making uh, guns in a uh, machine shop so, and the prototypes uh, for uh, tools and everything what they needed for a military or more for like everything com- commercially for everything yeah. for everything depend who is contractor so we did everything wow. uh we did big bear 50 calibers and uh 
uh, M15 rifle and parts, whatever they needed. So, and that was happening in uh, Utah, Salt Lake City. Oh, okay. Yeah. When when they started the war in Bosnia, I moved to Germany and I lived in Germany for four years and learned German language. So I moved to United States. And so technically, in in five years, I learned two languages: wow. English and German. So, so you come to the state, you end up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Correct. Yeah, they tell me you can have uh, multiple wives. So when I find out it's not true, I move to Florida. Ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he said, if you would know, we didn't get that. That was five wives. Yeah, five. But then realize one for each day, and the correct. weekends are off. <laughs> yeah, and I realize it's 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 not true. So I, I move. Uh, so, yeah, we spent like eight years. My both kids are born there. So, actually, I met my wife in Germany. And then uh, we moved to, uh, to Salt Lake, Utah, in 1997. The both kids were born there. So, I was, like I said earlier, I was working in a, in a, a machine shop, do most of the mechanical engineering stuff. Then uh, my wife went to, to the, digi- to the uh, lab. So she, mm-hmm. she get to school for the lab technician, and she was hired uh, f- with uh, Arrowhead. Arrowhead, yeah. Yeah, and she was really, really good. She was really talented. She's a skills one. And then... Uh, She's a waxer. Yeah. Amazing. And then uh, we move uh, back to... We, we moved to uh, Florida in 2005. We decided to come here. We went on vacation to have some family here. And then we stay. <laughs> so <clears throat> we find a job. Uh, she found a job at uh, Night Dental in 2005, and uh, she's still with them. And then uh, I was working in a, in, a, in a couple of companies here. And then one day she told me, hey, they have some uh, software that looks like yours, what you use for when you're designing the guns and other stuff. So let's try out. So, so I come in and study with... Uh, with uh, casting, then I went to the oh yeah, I remember that milling, uh, scanning, and and I end up in designing, which I really like. Uh, yeah, kind so of you're designing challenge. on the three shape now. Correct. Yeah. Correct. How similar is that software to gun making software? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a software calling uh, uh, SolidWorks. Okay. Okay. You you can on that you can <clears throat> pretty much. Uh, design whatever you want. You can design airplane. You design gun. You design because everything is in the parts. Sure. Yeah. So it's so you need only know uh, about what you're doing, what you're designing is. Uh, so if you have a, if you have a, you need some uh, mechanical designing project. If you auto industry, car industry, you can you can design uh, uh, parts for car. Mm-hmm. You're doing like a gun shop. You make a guns part, and you're collecting into the gun. Or you're doing, a, you're building the boat, the house, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty, pretty much a, a, a similar software. I know a lot of other different software. I, I did I just didn't do just design. I was making a, 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 a program from CNC machines and, and all the stuff. And then uh, when I come in the, in, in the lab, I saw, hey, that's kind of like uh, similar to me. Sure. And I really enjoy it. I like it. Was and that I, hard? I, it's technically, it's, it, it wasn't hard for me because uh, uh, my wife helped me a lot to, through With the... With anatomy and correct, all that. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, That's the hardest she, thing to teach. She challenged me that and, and I don't want to fail and she said, oh. I want to be better than her. And, uh, <laughs> How's that, go? How's and that going? A little friendly I, competition. I will, there. I will never make that, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll she, never she, say she, that on the podcast. She, yeah, oh. we, she may listen to this we, episode. We, we're going to cut you this. Cut yeah, yeah, <laughs> cut that, mark, mark the time. Mark yeah. the time Take a look. 6 17. To, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, and then, you know, I end up like a really nice. You, you, you know, we come home and we're. I talk about my problems, what I have uh, at the work. She she talked about what she has, so we we can discuss sure. yeah about anatomy, about uh, you know how we can do stuff, uh, especially in the beginning, and uh, and it, it was really nice. It, it What's was, your favorite thing to design now? 
full contour, anterior, the specializes in implants, implants and anterior. Implants, yep. anterior. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't mean to answer for you. Uh, no problem. It's it, Everything is challenge. I like, you know, those. Sure. Uh, the, if you have a perfect fa perfect uh, mouth, perfect bite, it's it's not challenge. But if, sure. you, have, if you have a really, really, really uh, complex case, uh, then, then, it, then it's... Then it's you know. Well, that's what keeps it enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. That's makes you, right. Makes it worth doing. Dealing with yeah. me, I'll come over. Yeah. Mirza, I have yeah. a rush. Can you pull this file up? Yeah. Will you help me design this? And he's yeah. always absolutely, totally, yeah. like 100%. Four, like 4.30 four, four, four in the clock. <laughs> and I have to rush, and here rush. And here comes Barb. Oh, and, I, and I come home, and I, I, and I my, my, my brain was, uh, you know, fry. And I look at, at, at the ceiling, <laughs> and then he relaxed for another half hour, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, there's no pressure there. Yeah. I, I'm a, not a pain in the ass at work. I promise you that. No. Hard, you're hard. good. You're good. I work for harder. <laughs> I people. have my moments. Yeah. Everybody has a we moment. We like it there. We have. We get along really well. Yeah. He sings happy birthday to everybody yeah, over the PA. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> nice. Yep. Yeah, He's good at it too. Yeah, see? It sounds like it. He's got many, many, many skills. So, yeah, so that's what you're doing now. What are you doing at the meeting? You're just kind of checking out everything and going you know, by and seeing I, new stuff? No, I was uh, I was looking at what we doing, uh, what we have doing, the uh, implants. I'm ah, focusing cool. on implants. I, I took two classes on implants. Good, good, good. It's very good nice to, to see, to grab some pictures and, uh, you know. It seems like they have really good yeah. content this year. I'm happy you guys yeah. came. Yeah. Got, we, we've got yeah, quite the crew stuff. here, obviously, because we were interviewing them all, but I was just so happy that everybody came and we've got about 10 people from night here and we all get along good and it's cool so thanks for coming no problem appreciate it all right nice Thank to you meet for you sharing your story no no problem nice to having me absolutely nice to meet you. Know. take care thank you thank you bye, -bye. you ready elvis I'm you know ready. this is my buddy elvis right? elvis john nice bosker to nice to meet you hopefully you'll turn your lab on to our podcast and it's all about our industry. We love it. We talk to lab owners. We talk to techs. We talk to companies. Um, we talk to pretty much anybody that will talk to yeah, us. Yeah, pretty and, much. And, and at these shows, I just kind of grab them. And That's Elvis, nice. Elvis waits for me to pull them in, and so we pulled you in. So this awesome. is John Boskers. We're at the FDLA again, John Bosker. With John and I go way back, too, with Marquee Dental Lab. Um, we go back probably 25 years. Uh, roller skates in the lab, I yeah, believe. Yeah, uh, probably as even, far, oh, geez. You were young, young, young back young. in those days. 11, 12, 13. Yes. So That's tell how far us. back have her since 11 and 12. Huh? Yes. Yes. So I worked for her father. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 17 years I worked for her father. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We worked together. He taught me yeah. a lot, man. He taught me how to QC, how to contour, surface texture. He taught me all the little um, details of contour when, we, when I was um, moving along. So I credit him with a lot of Came uh, on as an old today. picker back in yeah. the day in our department, wow. in the porcelain department. Yeah, making a whole $2 an hour yeah, as yeah. the boss's daughter. I had to keep, you know, my thumb down on her there. <laughs> So how did you get in the industry? I know you own a lab, so you own Marquee Dental, but uh, well, how'd you start? What do you so, love? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I uh, I got a job as an opaker, and uh, Shepherd Dental back in the early 80s had a laboratory, and they hired me as an opaker, and um, that's where I started, uh, just over-the-shoulder training. You know, uh, that's how uh, yep, we, we that's were how taught we back rolled. in the day. Mm -hmm. That's right. And... Um, you know, some of that's just history. I spent uh, 17 years uh, at Night Dental, proud to uh, have uh, had my career. That was my college. Yeah, that it really was. That was my college. It really was. Bet, wow. My dad was a bad yeah. back in the day, man. He was not the easiest person to work for. Everybody loved him, but he held a firm, uh, had a firm grip. So, but we liked it, and we learned a lot for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's your passion now? What do you like best about it? I know there's all this digital. I know your son's working for you. But yes. what do you like? What do you, what, are you still at the bench? I am still at the bench. Uh, but the one thing that I do enjoy about uh, what we do is I, I spend a lot of time out 
with the clients. So do uh, I. I, love I, that. I have uh, I created that that custom appointment for my clients, and so I deliver. In those cases that they want me there, I take my oven and my tackle box full of. Take an uh, oven. Uh, yeah, wow. I, I towed it all. I put a handle on one, so it's a full size regular porcelain department oven that I I towed in and out, um, and. Uh, being out in the field working in, with the patients. With the patients. With the patients. I, I miss my calling. I think I should have uh, uh, stayed uh, on my path to be a dentist. Uh, but, oh, that didn't work out. So, yeah. hey, let's be a dental technician. So that's how that went for me. Um, but that's, you know, I, I, I really have enjoyed now after Marquis is now 15 years. I haven't worked for you for 15 wow. years. So is running the business, the business side. I, you know, yes, Am I needed at the bench because I'm that full service guy? Yes, but the, my passion is now running the business, Good for you. you know, and cool. uh, dealing with that. And that—that's really what I enjoy the most. Same uh, here. Uh, you know, I can we do the bench with our eyes closed. Mm-hmm. It's the challenges of making all of that come together each and every day uh, that we have to have a passion for, or it doesn't work. Yeah, so, so how does it feel like having your son there? Is he still there? Yes, yes, he is. Uh, so how long has he been there? So we're eight years now. You've got to be proud of that. Yes, I absolutely. love that hereditary. And uh, he's, you know, he's grabbed the reins in regards to he knows that that will be his future and that uh, he will ease Smart. me out of the lab and uh, he, will be the, <laughs> he will be the young guy uh, taking, like, taking over. See you, Dad. That's right. I know it's time. Maybe another five years, but you got to go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, good for you. Yeah. So How you big can... is your lab? Do you have... So we're an eight-man eight okay. lab, um, and uh, we are – kind of a mixture uh, of old school Crowner Bridge and milling and zirconium. Um, We're here uh, this year with the thoughts of expanding. Um, We just mill standard, you know, zirconium Mm -hmm. crowns and bridges. I want to branch into screw retained. Nice. uh, You know, we run a four axis mill, so that limits us and what we're able to do. And so we're 2019 2020 for sure we will expand into a wet dry and yeah. uh, and be able to uh, service our clients in any way that they need our help so uh, so is that when you come to a show like this do you go to look for a mill or are you looking for products are you just looking to network or I'm networking here this year three? you know I have to say that uh, this is probably uh, been five years since I've been to this meeting. Really? So yes, it's well, been that good long. Good for you for coming uh, yeah, back. I, That's uh, awesome. Get out from under the rock. Uh, you know, I see so many people mm-hmm. uh, that I haven't seen in so long, and networking. So that's what I'm spending uh, this this uh, season's. Good uh, for you. Uh, and you're driving symposium. back and forth. I am you driving just back had and a forth. Uh, grandbaby. She is six days old today. Oh, wow. God. So we're so happy about that. Congratulations. I, you know, uh, yes, that's been a I great. Thing. See the glow. Oh, like. yeah. Her name is Addison, and uh, and she's a perfect, so good baby. Um, you know, I they live a block away from me. Oh, good for you. And so I drop. I've dropped in. Every day in the six days, Grandpa's here. (laughs) I don't even call anymore. I just knock on the door. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, thank you for sitting down with us. We appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Pass on our podcast info so uh, maybe y'all can check us out. It's so a do lot you of do people it, listen to it at work. Do you do it at uh, at home? I mean, on our side of town? Yeah. So this is something he that He lives we, in Illinois, so Indiana. 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 So Missouri. we remote in. Got we you. We do it over remote or we meet up at shows and talk to people. Yeah, we really way. like the shows because we're live and you get to see, you know, body language and stuff. But we started, Elvis started it. It was his brainchild. We're on episode fifty-eight. Eight. So is it, so would this be you know so we're now? Proud of it. Get, would I be able to have a topic and do this again? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, if so we, we, the shows when we do these, they're a lot more casual. Sure. Um, but we remote in and we do a whole hour interview where we can discuss anything you want to. It's a little pre-planned where we have yeah we questions. have the questions out. Sure, sure, sure. And, you know, we like to get more in depth. Gotcha. But these are just more, hey, introducing people, just chatting with people. For Get your name out. And when, he, nice. um, Thank you. when he releases it, But, yeah, it, if you're we'll interested, definitely. You. I, well, you know, I... We would love that. I, you know, I, I, I do still work for her, uh, so am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I 
I outsource for her. So she uses me for the yeah, things fans. that I can yeah. do for her. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And um, so, it, and we're only two miles away. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, so uh, we're just It's awesome. Uh, just it's convenient. It's amazing. He's you guys awesome. can do it face-to-face so, yeah. on your end. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so cool. we'd sit down and be able to do this again. I'd love Absolutely. to. You know, okay. I have a topic. So. Sure. Let's do awesome. it. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. joining us. All right. Nice um, to meet you, John. Very nice to meet you. Appreciate yeah. it. Elvis. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Elvis. All Elvis. right. Elvis. I was just making sure that that wasn't a, uh, a nickname nope. or – uh, nice. Yep. Nice. Really awesome. Elders. All right. Well, yeah. uh, it was a pleasure. And pleasure. I awesome. thank you for well, thank uh, you. putting me on uh, on your podcast. Thank you. All right. Super big thanks to Sharon, Dan, Mirza, and John. We can't thank you enough for sitting down with us at the FDLA. I'm really surprised they didn't tell us more dirt on Barb. We would have liked to have heard uh, more of the bad stories. Oh, come on. There's, there's no dirt on Barb. Nope. Never. Mirza, what do you got? <laughs> he left. Oh. He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you sent him back to work? Yeah. Yeah, no, he ran. Nice. He's like, dirt on, see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got one more episode from the FDLA that features the keynote speaker from the symposium. So join us next week. Remember, we still have super cool shirts benefiting the Foundation of Dental Laboratory Technology, which is great, Elvis. I just saw you um, share them at least four or five times on Facebook. Check them out. I would say from a size small, they run a little big. So just from my own FYI, they have a special message for the Race for the Future 6.0 on them. Head over to the Voices from the Bench or this episode show notes to order yours today. And again, all profits go towards the wonderful organization that supports education in our industry. And remember... Elvis and his team are running with voices from the bench and I'm running solo. So please support us. Thank you. No matter who raises the most money, it all goes to the same great cause. I've been swimming, biking and running. So I'm hoping that my time singularly beats you guys time as a team. And that's a boom. Remember, it's all about raising money. (laughs) No, it's all about the challenge and the competition. So yeah, raising money as well. All right, everybody, that's all we got. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great week. Take care. Bye. Bye. That's how pro play. That's how we roll.